Hello, friends. In a new location tonight, um, down in um, in Toronto, to Toronto, and um, here for a couple weeks. So you'll have this uh, sparkly background for a couple weeks, uh, right in the thick of downtown Toronto. Uh, staying with family for a little bit. <clears throat> And uh, hmm. so I also have a cold, so pardon the sleepy looking face and congestion. Um, so today, well, these past few days, as is always the case with these weekly things that I've been doing for a few years, I found myself thinking a lot about what practice to talk about and to, uh, what practice to offer and what talk to share um, tonight with it being February 14th, uh, commonly known as Valentine's Day. And uh, when this comes up, it, the natural <laughs> segue for many of us and for myself is to metta bhavana practice loving kindness, uh, cultivation of warm heartedness practice, meditation practice that uh, is sometimes called loving kindness. Um, and then I, I was feeling, I didn't look back, but I'm pretty sure that mm, over these years, as this date has rolled around, I've offered meta practice and talk in conjunction with Valentine's Day. And so I was, had me thinking a lot like, oh, what could I offer that is fresh or that, you know, I'm always mm, wanting to offer something uh, fresh. We'll just use that word. And uh, thankfully, I was uh, saved from my ruminating and papancha uh, um by uh, a sweet email subscription called the Daily Tejania. And um, that really re released me that what arose today, it came February 14th. Um, it's a little free subscription and it's just like a short, it's usually one sentence or two very short little uh, quotes from teachings from Saida Utejaniya. And uh, so I've put the link in the chat here and I'll put it below the Zoom recording to, if you want to register to sign up for the, the daily little email, little, little bites of Dharma that might uh, also free you when you need it. <laughs> May it be so. So I'll just give a bit of context before I share what that uh, quote was that came. So uh, Sayada Utejaniya is a Theravadan Buddhist monk, mm, but not but, and he didn't become a monk till he was 36, which is unusual in, in Burma. He, so he, but he was practicing and studying with a very renowned teacher um, while he was living as a householder, living the lay person's life. And I personally think that helps uh, make his teachings very accessible and relevant for those of us living a householder life. Um, he also shares that he, what he learned from mm, living with and through two major episodes of clinical depression that he shares motivated his mm, depth of practice. And uh, I'm quite drawn to teachers that are living with things that most of us are living with. For instance, when I was a 
yoga teacher uh, I studied with, um, oh no, foggy brain, Esther Myers, my brain just blanked out there, Esther Myers, who um, was at the time living with cancer and uh, I know so many people that have cancer so I was like yeah that's the yoga teacher that I want the one that's practicing and living with that reality okay so this is Sayadu Saida Utejaniya wonderful teacher and these little emails I'm telling you about that come each day are gathered compiled and sent by Doug McGill. And Doug McGill um, is a, also a Dharma teacher and an author uh, and a founder of the Rochester Meditation Center. <clears throat> and uh, so uh, I'll put a link to, well, you can find him through the link I've already put, but I'll put a link to his his site as well. Okay, so that's the context. I just want to respect those sources that I'm sharing from and, and give credit where it's due, of course. All right, so uh, back to me ruminating over what to offer and then feeling really in a moment freed by this email that came as I've shared. And it said this. <laughs> it's so good. If you think you have something very important to think about, <laughs> which I did, stop and ask yourself, if it's really important, why are you so eager to think about it? <laughs> it and it, it was just uh, landed for me in such a way that I was like, if something's really important, don't waste your time thinking about it get in the body and feel it, live it, do it, be it, right? So I was thinking about metta. How can I offer a metta practice that's fresh or juicy or relevant or new or something, blah, 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 which was just so much nonsense. <laughs> and uh, it just popped the bubble of it now and showed me that I was thinking so much about metta instead of be metta. Be metta. Um, and <clears throat> it's interesting in this quote because I read it a certain way. And then when I went back to it, I saw the punctuation was different than how I read it. So I emailed Doug and we had a little Dharma nerd back and forth about it. <laughs> Thank you, Doug, for replying. It was very sweet. That was very nice. That just happened today. Um, because the way he shared it in the quote is more like this. If you think you have something very important to think about, stop and ask yourself if it's, if it's really important, period. Why are you so eager to think about it? So it, it just had a little bit slightly different meaning. And so we were just uh, had a little, some emails back and forth. And, and it was, you know, uh, it's difficult to communicate by email, but uh, he shared some insights from his uh, real in-depth practice and awareness of Saida Utejaniya's teachings and and the, and what he often offers. So he offered a bit more clarification, which I'll share with you. And he said that he thinks the real emphasis in that quote is on the word and the feeling of eagerness. Um, and to keep a strong eye out, a strong awareness for the feeling of eagerness, which Saida Utejaniya uh, frequently highlights as 
the arising of craving. That was so interesting as well. Eagerness as a little clue, a little sign, like, hmm, is there an arising of craving here, of clinging? And, and of course, that's what was happening for me, was in my eagerness to figure something out and thinking about what to offer was a little clinging of wanting it to be a certain way, wanting to show up in a certain way, be a certain type of someone. Uh, so eagerness to get something from the thinking, mental pleasure, we get a lot of mental pleasure from thinking about things, oh, go over it, go over it, think about it, figure it out, you know, this is a form of pleasure, and even if it's causing us suffering, uh, we might be eager to get something from thinking in the form of uh, to get certainty or to get a conclusion, you know, to relieve the feeling of not knowing, to get some ease, you know, you know by thinking we figured something out. So there's uh, some interesting insights and reflections there around eagerness. So for me, how this showed up today, uh, when I kind of, it, that quote kind of popped the bubble for me of thinking about metta to being metta, to, it, it was very liberating and just dropped a lot of the story. I was like, I don't need to figure anything out, <laughs> certainly. <laughs> just... Uh, be metta, loving kindness, friendliness. So if you're not familiar with this word metta, metta bhavana, there's many translations. One of the most frequent is loving kindness. Um, and that can feel uh, too big for lots of folks, lots of times. So it's also... Uh, friendliness, uh, sometimes benevolence, um, kindness. Uh, this teacher that shares the daily Tashaniya quotes um, refers to it as radiant warm heartedness. So good, radiant warm heartedness. Um, and the, another teacher I'm going to reference tonight, Devin Hayes. Uh, refers to metta as a deep naturalness. Oh, that's so sweet. A deep naturalness. And, and that's what uh, dropped in for me today was just stop all the fussing and just reconnect with deep natural care. Interrelatedness with myself, with all beings and the cultivation of that, which is a both a natural state and something we cultivate. Both are true. Mm. Uh, the what Doug refers to as radiant warm heartedness. Uh, His Holiness the Dalai Lama also says it this way: the ultimate source of happiness is not money and power but warm-heartedness. That's mm, good. Uh, yeah, so uh, for me, mm, I had some opportunity today, some respite from caregiving. And uh, when I stopped trying to figure out a talk for tonight, I... Uh, I went to bed. <laughs> it was so good. I'm not a napper, I must say. And I didn't sleep. But just, just stopping and just going to bed was so sweet. And I just laid in bed and did this metta practice for like, like a couple hours. <laughs> it was great. And then I went outside and practiced 
this metta practice in the midst of, of, of this. And that was also uh, heart tenderizing. Um, hmm. Yeah. Don't know if there's any more to say about it. Let me just see. <clears throat> oh, yeah, uh, Devin Pace. Um, I've uh, shared their website here as well. Their author and Dharma teacher at IMS and Spirit Rock and elsewhere. Um, also refer to Meta as responsive connected caring i love this word responsive responding in present moment caring awareness to ourselves each other and all beings <clears throat> and to see what gets in the way of that what gets in the way of us uh, our natural deep naturalness our warm natural warm heartedness what gets in the way and of course one of those things is thinking thinking too much and uh, really not paying attention to where we are what's happening and what's needed uh i'm just gonna have a drink of water <clears throat> which I should have put in a glass before I signed on, but there you have it. Um, the phrases um, that we'll, I'll offer in the practice tonight are also from Devin Hayes. And there's a little slight variation in uh, the way they word uh, part of the phrase that I really, really like. And it's around, uh, we often say, may I be happy, may I be safe, may I be well, and may I be peaceful. This is kind of a, the you know, stripped down version. And um, so, may I be safe, uh, Devon offered in a practice, mm, worded slightly differently, but may, may I be protected by love and wisdom. I, and uh, I think she actually said it slightly differently. She said, may love and wisdom protect you, protect me. Mm. But that is so good <laughs> because may I be protected mm. can, might, reinforce a sense of protecting myself like just uh, reinforcing and separating protecting myself but being protected by love and wisdom has a different sweetness to it of understanding how metta bhavana is also taught and um, in the metta sutta is referenced as a protection and how wisdom, seeing clearly with compassion and presence, is in itself a protective force. That we uh, don't have to be so um, self-protecting when it comes from a place of love and wisdom. Yeah. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> Talking to myself. <clears throat> yeah. So, uh, this practice tonight, I'm just checking in. Mm. Yeah. So, I'll, I'll, um, Offer it the way 
the way it showed up for me today. And it might not be what is most resonant or feel accessible for you. Because uh, for me, I started with meta for myself today. I was like, when I stopped, like, oh, just be meta. I was like, oh, sweetheart, go lay down. <laughs> okay. Uh, practice meta. And in there where I was taking care of myself, um, then I was able to connect with others from a real resourced heart place. So I know that can be challenging for some people to begin with ourselves. Um, try. <laughs> okay. So as is often said with metta bhavana, bhavana means cultivation. So we're we're growing and remembering and reconnecting with this natural capacity. Um, it's uh, often offered and reminded to be really careful, full of care with your posture. And that's why I went to bed when I was practicing this today. It was like I needed to lay down. So if you need to lay down, for this practice, you might want to do that now. You might want to turn off your lights, um, get a shawl, a pillow, um, turn away from the computer if you want, so that we're offering care, comfort, and attention to this heart, body, mind in order to do this practice skillfully. Okay, so take a moment to adjust if you would find that helpful right now. <clears throat> I'm going to mute for a moment and have another drink of water before I continue. Hmm. Okay, so hopefully you've brought in some support for your body, some caring attention to what you need. <clears throat> and hmm. As you're arriving in your posture, see if it feels helpful or releasing, presencing to take a few slightly deeper breaths or sighing breaths. And then invite and feel the sensation of your bones dropping down. If you're laying down, dropping back. Often our muscular tension holds our bones up away from the ground, ready for fight or flight responses. And so just see what it's like to let the bones drop. So that you feel more weightedness, presence, earthiness, If there's a lot of mental formations in our day, a lot of thinking, this is can be uh, quite an airy feeling. And we want to drop into the body and feel our earthy, watery qualities.
and feel our relationship with the earth that is here and now that sometimes we forget. Forgetting happens. Remembering happens. So feel that you are held. Held by the Dharma. Held by these earth qualities. And see that just by how you're relating to and meeting yourself in this present moment mm, is already connecting us with what is this deep naturalness. This is our nature, embodied, present moment. Just taking a few minutes in these next minutes of silence to attend to, open to, meet what is here for you here and now. How's the body? The energy the heart-mind. Meeting yourself as if you've just opened the door and found a dear friend there that you, you welcome in and want to know how are you really? Create yourself in this way. And as we connect with this deep naturalness that is also a cultivation, something to be grown and cultivated and steadied, we bring in these intentions You can just repeat these silently. May I be happy and peaceful. May I be protected by love and wisdom. May I be healthy and strong in body and mind. May I awaken 
and be free. May I be happy and peaceful. May I be protected by love and wisdom. May I be well in body and mind. May I awaken and be free. I'll repeat these one more time and then you can practice silently with yourself, with your own words, these words, or the felt sensation. May I be happy and peaceful. May I be protected by love and wisdom. May I be well in body and mind. May I awaken and be free. And now from this place of offering and receiving care to our own most intimate life partner, ourselves, we incline our awareness to include others. So tonight you can open and include awareness with a being that it feels easeful and natural to offer this caring response to this uh, warm heartedness, radiant warm heartedness. So this may be a benefactor, a teacher that has, has offered you wisdom and care. It may be family or friend. It may be an animal companion. It may be a place in nature, a river or forest, the earth itself. So just trust what's arising, where the heart naturally inclines as a place of uh, 
warm heartedness, connection, and staying embodied and in relationship, connection with other, we offer and cultivate, may you be happy and peaceful. May you be protected by love and wisdom. May you be well in body and mind. May you awaken and be free. May you be happy and peaceful. May you be protected by love and wisdom. May you be well in body and mind. May you awaken and be free. Let's continue together in silence. And if the mind has slipped into thinking, gently reconnect with the body and remembering that this is our deep naturalness. And then we'll open now to <clears throat> all those, which is most of most of the people we know, which are really unknown to us, neutral people that we don't have strong likes or dislikes, and we're surrounded by and passing by and living amongst many, many beings.
So just opening into this radiant field of warm heartedness. And let that be as, as spacious, as open, as feels accessible for you. Maybe in your neighborhood, maybe wider, it may be vast. And to all those who are unknown to us, unseen, often unconnected to, may you be happy and peaceful. May you be protected by love and wisdom. May you be as well as possible in body and mind. May you awaken and be free. May you be happy and peaceful. May you be protected by love and wisdom. May you be well in body and mind. May you awaken and be free. Continuing together, our awake, aware, warm heartedness, connecting in a vast field. People all around the world in this very moment are practicing metta. May all beings everywhere, seen and unseen, born and unborn, distant and near, and dear to us and, and those who we feel unfriendliness towards. May all beings everywhere know true happiness and peace. May all beings everywhere be protected by love and wisdom.
may all beings be as well as yeah. possible. Jill. And may all beings awaken and be free. Sorry, friends, I have to jump off quickly because I'm needed here. Um, so thank you for for joining and um, hope to practice with you again. Take care. Thank you, Jill. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.